Hello. Can you hear me? Cool. Hey, I'm Jan, um, and I'm going to talk about memory management. And uh, I'll probably teach kind of like a lesson, like a university lesson. So I'm happy that so many people turned up for my university lesson. That's amazing. Um, the clicker isn't working. What? OK, I'll just do it like this. None of the clicking is working now. What? Um, OK. The clicker stopped working. It's doing weird things now. Like everything is moving apart from the slides. <laughs> I clicked on the slides. OK. Um, yeah, this is going to be weird then. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, it's doing it now. Yes. OK. So I'm Jan. Um, I'm the Deftone on Twitter. And you might know me from a JavaScript band called The Nested Loops. Uh, we uh, perform fun JavaScript music. That sounds. JavaScript? JavaScript? JavaScript. What are you? Virtual DOM. JavaScript. Um, but sadly, today I'm not here to talk about this. Uh, I'm talking to, to you about a problem that we faced at SoundCloud. Uh, my employer. And SoundCloud, if you don't know, is this site where you can stream music. It's very creative focused. And this website is a giant backbone application. Whoa, I said the B word. Whoa. Um, yeah, it's like its own framework on top of that. Uh, but no worries, I'm not going to bother you with backbone because. Recently, we built this. This is our Xbox application, and it's written in React, Redux, and TypeScript. It's a stack that has been working super well for us. And fun fact, it's actually super easy to build uh, React applications for Xbox. So if you want to talk about that, we can talk about it afterwards. Um, so this was a new application with a lot of features. Like you can see, you have like your like tracks, uh, your playlists, and all that stuff in there. And one of my um, most favorite songs is Redbone by Childish Gambino. Um, so I like this track. So I liked it. It's also, I like the album. So the song is also in an album that I liked. And it's in my listening history. So if you think about it, if you have a REST application, you fetch all your likes, you fetch the albums you liked, you fetch uh, your listening history, then you have three different sets of the same data that you download from a server, and then you have to maintain that in your front end. You don't want to throw it away because a user might go back to it, but let's say I want to change something in the song, I have to change it in three different places. I have to change my likes, I have to change the albums, I have to change the listening history, and it just let's say I add one more collection, like it's just getting out of hand. And I kind of want to introduce a concept that helps us maintain uh, this code base a lot. Uh, so, again, we have our likes, albums, and a listening history, and the red dot is actually a red bone. So that's the song that we download all the time. Um, so we have three copies of the same song, and that's very inefficient, because you might potentially download a lot more duplicates, and then you have to maintain a lot more on your uh, in the front end. And um, Data normalization, you might have heard about that in university, helped us a lot maintaining this. What does this mean is, so we have these three collections. And when we fetch these REST collections or entities, uh, we process the data into entities and we group them by type. So all the tracks go in the, into the tracks corner, and all the albums go into the albums corner. And if you count all the dots, what we, s what we have to maintain in the front end code now are only um, six. Yes, I counted correctly. Six tracks, and one of them is Redbone, instead of 10 tracks, of, the of which whom are a lot of duplicates. So how do you work with this data afterwards? Um, all you have to do is, in your collections, let's say you have like a Redux likes property, um, you never deal with the data inside this likes collection but you have references and you use selectors to fetch the actual data. Uh, let me give you a, an example for that. So this is your, your regular Redux state. Who here knows a bit about Redux? Ooh, that's a lot of people. No worries. If you don't know anything about Redux, this is all you need to know. Like put all your data in like one big object, and then you write a function that extracts data from that, and then you're pretty much done. 
So as I said, you have all your entities, like with the albums and tracks with the, with the actual data. They're empty objects because I don't have so much space. But the likes now only is an array of IDs. And then the way to get this data is you write a select function, you select it, oh, I get this ID in, and then you get it back. Um, and the cool thing about this now is if I have a selector or like an action and I want to act and change data, I only need to change it into the, in the entities part of the thing. And it updates magically everywhere else in my app because of the beauty of Redux. So data normalization is like the one thing that really, really helped us dealing with this huge code base. And let's go back once more. This is the Xlog application. But we have a problem, like a really big problem. Uh, users use this app a lot. Like They listen to a lot of songs, they tweak playlists, they go to profiles, um, they use discovery, and they use it a lot. And they use it for a long period of time. Like, no shit, but users use this app for like a week. They never close it. Or like if you have a tab open for two weeks or something, they never refresh the page. And you might be asking, what's the problem? I mean, People use your app, that's great. And like, don't get me wrong, that's great. Um, it's just that from like a computer science perspective, we run into problems um, because we keep adding and adding and adding data uh, to our Redux store. Um, let me just visualize this. This is time, this is memory usage. And at some point it goes boom. Um, you might have seen this before. And this is not so bad, I would say, if that actually happens and you're browsing, you just refresh. Um, but let's say you're playing a game. Let's, let's say you're playing Call of Duty, you're listening to your favorite tracks, you turn up the music, it's like, yeah, it's so cool, you're in the zone. And then, because you only have 50 megabytes in the background on Xbox, uh, the app is using too much memory, and the Xbox, app is, uh, Xbox system is like, oh, let's kill SoundCloud, and then the music stops. And like you have full blast, like explosions and everything, all of a sudden, instead of like your cool classical music that you were listening to while you were playing. Uh, so this is a huge problem um, for us, and it's also not just us. Uh, data management is a hot topic um, for other web desktop apps. Uh, you might have seen this before. This is VS Code. Uh, they have like a really, for them, it's quite easy to solve this data problem because they have tabs that users actually close. Like, you never have like all the files in your project open at once. If you do, we should talk, maybe, I don't know. Um, but this is kind of like how they manage their state. Um, you might have seen this one. This is Slack. Uh, you might know that they use a shit ton of your memory all the time. So they are definitely thinking about how to fix this problem, but I, I don't know if they figured it out. Last time I checked, they were still using two gigabytes. Uh, I don't know what their solution is, to be honest. And this is Mailspring, which is an Electron uh, email client. And they fixed this memory problem in a very interesting way. Uh, they moved it out of JavaScript land and built a C++ core to deal with all the data. <laughs> um, that does not really work for us, because we want to have things on a website uh, that people can just go to with a link. It's great. Um, yeah. Um, but let's cover the basics. Um, how do you free memory in JavaScript? Anyone? <laughs> Easiest, uh, reload the page. Uh, the, you, you're laughing, but it's the best way. Uh, there are some websites that detect your session is, I don't know, two days old now, and then on the next click, they just refresh the page, and then it's a clean slate. Problem is, uh, at SoundCloud, we cannot do that because music is likely playing, and you don't want to have the music interrupt while you go to another page. Uh, so sadly, we cannot do this. Um, the next thing you can do is like set whatever blob you have to null. And that's a good idea, but if you remember this Redux object, it's like this one big object, and you cannot just say uh, null, because then all your data is gone. Uh, so you kind of have to find like a way to do this in a smart way. Um, so we had to find a way to release parts of this big object. And here, now you're welcome to my university lesson about garbage collection 101. Um, luckily, this is a problem that has been solved before and researched a lot, so that's great. 
um, let's have a look at some solutions to this problem. And the first thing, the first concept in garbage collection is reference counting. It's the simplest one. Um, so the way it looks like, you have something called an entity successor, and they have a pool of entities. So these are like T1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and they have like this little red one attached to them. That means in your application, this object is used once right now. So and if you want to have access to, a doc, uh, to an object, you're like, hey, I want object T1. This entity successor is like, sure, I will look for it. Ah, yeah, that's T1. Uh, it's used once, so I increase the counter. Now it's used twice. I return the object. Here you go. Here's your object. Um, that's kind of what it does. So when you then don't need this object anymore, uh, it's like, hey, I don't need T1 and T2 anymore. Then it's like, OK. Uh, this is used once, so I decrease the counter. The counter is now zero. And at some point, your program decides, oh, let's garbage collect. And what it then does is like, give me all the objects that have zero references and then remove them. So all the stuff that we don't need anymore is removed. That's the first concept. Uh, the problem is it has this overhead of like, you have to add counters to uh, your data store and all that stuff. Um, so people have come up with better solutions. Um, this one is called tracing garbage collection. This is very similar to what I showed you in the beginning. Um, with the Redux store, you have entities, you have a playlist view. Let's say that's your uh, entity for a playlist, and then uh, a play queue, where like all the songs that, that are in your player right now. Uh, so entities, you have tracks and playlists. Uh, the playlist view has a reference to like one um, to playlist one, and the play queue has the tracks one and one, two, and three in it. So the entities now look like this. There are some other ones floating around, and what tracing does is, um, let's say we navigate away from the playlist view. Uh, that means we remove this count, like this reference, from from our store. Um, that means we can remove this reference up there, P1. That means we can remove all the tracks that were in P1 that are not referenced from anywhere else, and we can get rid of all of this. And so this is like a more like, what is the relation between data rather than like have like a manual counting uh, kind of way of freeing up your memory. Um, so uh, this is actually happening in two steps because traditionally it's like, it's called mark and sweep. So you first mark everything you don't want anymore, and then you just remove it. Um, but I don't think we need this today. Um, and this is pretty much what we did. Um, we implemented a tracing garbage collector for Redux. Um, because we looked at both concepts, and as I said before, like we wanted to have like an easy system that we can plug into our Redux application uh, and not add tons of metadata about what what does the data look like, and how often is it used here and there. Um, but we also saw like a very significant similarity between this tracing approach and how like Redux actually works. So if you look at this again, uh, look at the arrows. Uh, these arrows are Redux selector functions, essentially. Um, and this is our normalized state. So since this concept of tracing by design is already very similar to how Redux is built, we're like, we can probably do something with this. And um, so let's go back into how Redux works. So the way this works is like you connect, oh, let me go one, one step back. So in order to implement this, we need to know at any given point in time when we want to garbage collect, what are the selector functions? What are the references uh, out there? Because these references, according to the algorithms, give us the key to remove all this data. So we looked at how Redux connects your components. And we built our own connect function, which is garbage collect connect. Um, and this is your classical React Redux um, implementation of things, right? You have a a playlist component, it renders a playlist, and you have your 
selector function that looks at the state and then returns the state, and you connect this one, right? You connect this map state to props with few things. Like, does this look familiar? People are nodding, great. And so what we wanted to do is not introduce something that has a very different API uh, so that we could just plug it in whenever we wanted. So this is how the garbage collected version looks like. Can you see the difference? It's right there. It's only these two letters that are different. Um, so because this is a bigger team working on this, uh, we didn't want to have to teach everyone, oh yeah, in order to garbage collect your data, uh, you have to do this and this and this and this and this. We ra rather wanted to make it easy so that people could just plug it in and it just works. Um, also, it's easier for people, like when you have somebody new coming to your team and they know React and Redux, they don't have to learn all these, oh yeah, you know React and Redux? Well, we have the special Redux, you know? We do this other things. You have to learn a lot of that. So that's, uh, that's an easy way to keep it easy for all, all the people. So now let's go on a little journey and let's implement this. Uh, this is it. So this is GC Connect. That's the thing that you saw before. Uh, it gets the selector function. And what we do is we create a combined component, um, like a composed component. So the first thing we do is what this component does is just the regular Redux connect. So that's like it's still plugged into the Redux cycle of things. So that's what we do for your component. And then we add some lifecycle methods. So whenever uh, your component gets mounted, we add the selector to like an internal store of selectors. And whenever it unmounts, we remove this selector. Does that make sense? Um, now let's look at how this is implemented. Um, this special store of selectors is just an array that floats around uh, in our space. And if you want to add a selector, everything you have to do is look, oh, do I already have this selector? Um, if I have this selector, then just update the selector. And if I don't have it, then just add it to uh, our code base, uh, to our list of all selectors that we need. Um, yeah. So we also store like the selector function, the props, and the instance, because we somehow want to associate Oh, this is this one node that just got removed, so we need to like find out which one got removed and all these things. Uh, if you want to remove something, uh, it's really simple. It's just a filter on uh, on your array. Like, uh, do I have this function somewhere already? Let then remove them all. Um, that's cool. And high level, how this looks like. This is our selectors array. Um, the track view comes into place. The track selector gets added. The playlist view comes into play. The playlist selector gets added and then the playlist of view unmounts, and it's gone. So this is how we kind of keep track of this. Uh, if we go back to our very beautiful example, um, this view results in the following selectors. You have one selector that selects playlist one, and you have one selector that selects the tracks one, two, three. Um, now the playlist view is like, oh no, I don't, I, I want to go away from this. I want to go to like another track view or something. That means we remove this, and then we can start garbage collecting. But I haven't explained at all yet how that part works. Um, so we're kind of using like a shortcut here. Um, garbage collection for us is, so before you garbage collect, you take your state, and then you take all your selectors, and if you put them together, you get a condensed version of the state. Um, we always start with a like, clean, empty store. We take the state that you had before, we take all the selectors that are on page right now, we run them against the state, and then put them in the into the new state. So we don't remove things, but rather recreate the state all the time. This might sound confusing, but I will explain in a second. And the way this is implemented is it's just a simple reducer act, like a simple Redux action. So there's like a garbage collection action that just starts a special reducer um, behind the scenes that lives next to our regular reducer. And then the garbage collection reducer is actually the most boring part of this because it is a giant reduce over all your selectors. So you pretty much, you take the old state, 
and then reduce all selectors and then keep adding to a empty state. As you can see, the reduce function accepts an empty state. So this is literally what we, what we start with. We throw everything away, but we still have this old state there, and then we run all selectors, and then we get this fresh, clean, we don't have duplicates part of the state. How does this look like? So if you remember, we just unmounted the playlist view, uh, and we decided, hey, it's time for garbage collection. So what this actually means is this selector isn't there anymore. So the playlist selector that you saw here, totally gone. Um, we only have a selector for these three tracks. So that means we have to do something with the entities over there. Uh, what we do is we wipe everything, and then we run all the selectors. Um, and then all the selectors means we only have these three tracks. And this is pretty much how the system works. Um, this is different to how all systems otherwise do it. If you know that like the one, one big concept of Redux is that you cannot mutate your data. So traditionally what you would do is you would iterate over like your, your store tree or state or whatever, and then set things to null or like call delete store.entities.track this track delete it, but you cannot mutate this object. So that also would create a lot of undefines or whatever in your state, and this is like a very clean solution to this problem. And it's also very efficient because what's faster than an empty object? Um, so we ended up with this graph. Nothing's crashing anymore. It's just going up and down, up and down. Um, now you might wonder, how efficient is this? Um, because let's say you have 200 views on your uh, visible at any given point in your application. Um, no worries. They will not re-render because the only thing you do is you run 200 selector functions every, I don't know, 10 minutes, every one hour, I don't know. And they um, only those are evaluated. And if you keep them simple, it's 200 function calls that it's easy, like you can deal with that. Um, components are not re-rendered because the references of your data are still the same references that they were before because you haven't changed the state object at all. You just moved it from one place to the other, and you select it from another place. But it's still the same reference, so nothing is re-rendering. And the cool thing is this only happens, I don't know, depending on your application, when you want to garbage collect. Uh, so maybe once a day or something. Um, maybe, maybe that's not enough, maybe more like once an hour. Um, disadvantage of this approach is you will reevaluate all these selectors. Um, and right now, what I see is that some people try to do some magic in these selector functions. Like they're like huge and like they reduce a lot of things. Um, you might want to keep them like very condensed, minimized, and like be ready that like garbage collection is happening. Um, and you need like if you have like in your data like dependencies, let's say, in my example, it was like a playlist can be removed, but it also has to, like tracks could be inside this playlist. You need to have some sort of metadata on top of this to model like, okay, if I remove a playlist, can I also remove all these tracks? You have to somehow find out how this, how this data behaves in, in your application. Um, you have to add this at some point. Uh, disclaimer, this is a bit simplified. Um, if you run the code that I uh, just showed you, it won't work uh, because you need to run the reducer on some like special part of your state and all these things. But I gave you all the building blocks right now uh, to implement this in your application, and I'm happy to talk. Like if you have, if you're facing this problem, happy to talk about uh, implementations. But please, you might not need this. Uh, you might be like, oh yeah, that's cool. I'll totally implement this on Monday because we have probably like, I don't know, 100 objects in our Redux store and I totally want to get rid of 20 of them. This is not a problem. Uh, like first, if your app is facing this problem of memory issues, 
then analyze, is this actually a real problem of the data, or is this more like all these images that we have, or all this music we're playing, all these videos? And only later, when you identify this is actually a problem, implement this. And then we can talk. Uh, we can also talk about it now, but please think about it before you do this, because this comes with some overhead. Um, somebody has to maintain this garbage collection in the application. The, the actual implementers don't like off like views. They don't have to care, but somebody has to take care of this. Um, if you don't want to believe me, you can believe Dan Abramov, because in 2016, he replied on GitHub, hey, do you su suggest I should go with a normalized approach and worry about garbage collection when it becomes a problem? And he's like, yes. Don't worry about it right now. Like, worry about making great applications. And then, if you see it's not a great application because of this, only then implement a garbage collector. And that's it for me. Thanks.